Hey everybody, Mark Armstrong in Charlotte with the Tar Heels. What a performance up in Pittsburgh today by the Duke Blue Devils as they just pounded Rhode Island by 25. Marvin Bagley just too much to handle. So Duke safely into the Sweet 16. So what does Carolina have to do over on this side of the bracket to get past the Texas A&M Aggies, you ask? Well, the main thing these guys boast is supersized front line. 6'10", 6'10", 6'9". They have got a lot of beef, a top 20 rebounding team in the country. But here's the thing. The Tar Heels are the second best rebounding team in the country. It could come down to that. The biggest thing tomorrow is going to be gang rebounding. We have to we have to do it as a team. Uh, I'm sure both bigs, me or Luke or Garrison or Sterling or Huff, all those guys, we're going to do everything we can to get those bigs out of the paint. Playing with effort and energy, man, putting a body on people, boxing out, uh, getting first position on defense, and just playing with effort because those guys are athletic. They may be more gifted athletically, but we just got to outwork them a little bit. I knew that we would be a real good rebounding team because if they didn't rebound and didn't box out, they weren't going to play. I'd find five guys that would. Uh, but also we emphasize it so much that they bought into it. They just they're maybe the biggest team I've ever looked at. And so we've got to try to do it at a higher level now than about anybody else that we play. I've known Coach Williams since he was an assistant. He may not even remember that long, but we've been in the business a long time, and he's been a guy I've looked up to and a mentor, just the way he carries himself and what kind of man he is. That's important to me. The Tar Heels continue to have fun. They will bear down once it gets to be game time, of course, but staying loose has been a key and will remain a key for the Heels. It goes back to Coach. I mean, he just bottom line, he lets us be us. Uh, he doesn't try to hold anybody back as far as having fun. He he knows that these moments aren't guaranteed. You want to enjoy every moment. And I think that's what we do the best here. Uh, we understand like certain teams don't get here much. Certain teams move on and like we got to be ultra locked in. We can't be playing around and stuff like that. And then you you look back and like we didn't take advantage of this moment of being here. And I think that's the biggest thing we do here is that we have fun and um, we savor every moment we have with each other. Do you have any rules as far as what your guys can wear as far as headbands, tights, any of that kind of stuff, or any feelings on that? Headbands went the way of uh, Gonzaga in 2006 in Madison Square Garden when I walked out on the court and I got five or six guys in headbands. We got beat, we stunk, and there's never been a headband and there will be another headband on a North Carolina player, period, the end. Shane Battier, if he wanted to come back play, we'd talk about it, but we wouldn't wear a headband, okay? Uh, tights, I kid, kid them all the time. Now all my coaches wear them out there. I told them I'm really going to surprise them one day. I'm going to walk out with some tights on and Theo just about puked right there. So, um, you know, but it's crazy to me. You wear them on one leg and not on the other, you know, and I see that. And you wear it the next day, you may switch. I tell them I wouldn't mind wearing them because sometimes it's cold, but uh, no. That is honestly the full extent of our conversation of tights. Let's make sure we understand that.